How Russian banks can avoid SWIFT, CHIPS, CHAPS, practical solutions explained. Can I just start with making this statement as a result of Russia West standoff? Whichever the way you look at the situation, China wins. Russian Central Bank is sanctioned by the West. Russia lost an access to half of its reserves, hundreds of billions of dollars. This is a financial nuclear attack on Russia. What do you think will be the consequences in a global scale? This is a beginning of a turning point for the United States dollar and a beginning of a new monetary order in which countries are far less interconnected through international bank accounts and reserves. Ban on Russian central bank reserves by the West may encourage central banks all around the world to diversify away from the dollar or try to re-anchor their currencies to assets that are less susceptible to influence from the United States or European governments. First thing comes to my mind as an alternative asset is gold. Russia holds $120 billion worth of gold, more than its dollar-denominated reserves. Russian currency ruble might become de facto or literally backed by gold. Same danger is true for the US dollar as a reserve currency. Sanctions on Russian central bank reserves is a weaponization of money. You only get to play the card once. China will make sure that it will get rid of the US dollar, euro, British pounds or US treasuries from its reserves. This is a turning point in monetary history. The US surveils cross-border money flows using SWIFT, Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications. SWIFT is based in Brussels, Belgium, but its data center is in Virginia, United States. 95% of the world's dollar payments are settled in New York by CHIPS, the clearinghouse interbank payment system. It consists of 43 financial institutions which settles $1.8 trillion in claims every day using a pre-funded account at the Federal Reserve. Because SWIFT and CHIPS are subject to United States law, authorities can easily catch and punish any financial institutions that go against their will. By the way, if you like what we talk about on this channel, please consider subscribing. Click on the bell button to get notified when I upload future videos. Let's get back to our main subject. How Russian banks can avoid SWIFT in cross-border transactions. We've always heard about Russian central banks' vast reserves. Russia might have lost an access to half of its reserves based on mid-2021 data because of Western sanctions. Some of the Russian banks are cut off from SWIFT, even though it's largely symbolic, they can't cut off all Russian banks. Russia doesn't need SWIFT inside Russia, majority of Russian banks are connected to SBFS, Russian alternative to SWIFT. Russian central bank suggested to its European partners to join SBFS. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Under these circumstances, how Russian banks can avoid SWIFT in international cross-border transactions? If they're in other system that provides financial messaging, clearing and settlement services for cross-border transactions without the risk of exposing transaction information to the United States, that's a key point, not to expose the transaction information to the United States because of the sanctions. Quick answer is yes, there is one. But let me quickly mention that what would actually replace these legacy global financial systems in the future? It's digital currencies, more likely central bank digital currencies. China is a pioneer in this field. Chinese government data shows that 261 million digital wallets had been opened and transactions totaled 87.6 billion yuan, uh, the US equivalent of $13.9 billion, by the end of December 2021. Currently, Digital Yuan is mainly focused on domestic retail payments, but China is working towards using it in cross-border payments in the future. Hong Kong and Singapore will be the first candidates to use it in cross-border payments. Russia is also testing Digital Ruble. 12 Russian banks together with Russian Central Bank is testing the future Russian currency. By the way, um, I will make a video of the details so far what is available, how the testing going and which banks are testing it. Here's the most important thing about digital currencies when it comes to avoiding the Western financial policing is that payment and the settlement happen concurrently. Real-time cross-border transactions could be achieved this way. No doubt that when central bank digital currencies are launched, they will pick up a pace real quick as they offer quick and low-cost solution in both domestic retail sector and cross-border transactions. Before it's launched though, it, it still needs to solve a few issues like currency sovereignty, foreign exchange management rules, anti-money laundering and anti-terrorism financing. 
it might take another two to five years until we see central bank digital currencies start challenging current global financial structure. Until then, we will stick to currently available systems that still offers practical solution when it comes to avoiding the Western financial policing. But before that, let's quickly talk about what kind of measures Russia is taking to stabilize its currency to provide liquidity to Russian banks and boost Russian businesses. What are the options available for Russian central bank to improve its liquidity? Here are some of those measures that have already been taken by Russian leaders. All IT companies won't pay tax on profit for the next three years. From 1st of March 2022, the Russian government abolished 20% VAT tax payment on gold purchases to prevent the Russian citizens hoarding foreign currencies. Instead, they want them to buy gold. Employees of IT companies will be able to receive preferential mortgages and will be free from compulsory army services. Tax preferences will be extended to developers of mobile applications and organizations involved in the implementation, installation and testing of domestic IT solutions. The government will also expand the grant program for the creation of domestic IT solutions. Rules to get a job and residence permit for foreign IT specialists in Russia is simplified and made easier now. Russia will launch fourth and biggest capital amnesty program, this time the possibility of declaring cash and more detailed financial assets. In the past, Russia raised $35 billion with capital amnesty programs. Russian exporters are required to sell 80% of foreign exchange earnings starting from 1st of January 2022, so it's backdated. They must do so within three days of receiving the income. This is done to support the rubles exchange rate. When a foreign currency is exchanged for rubles, its value increases. Russian companies are prohibited from lending to foreign partners in foreign currency. Russian citizens are not allowed to transfer more than 5,000 US dollars or equivalent abroad to non-residents from four to three countries that announced sanctions against Russia. Okay, now let's answer our main questions. It looks like there are two potential solutions available for Russia to stabilize ruble, provide liquidity to banks and support Russian businesses with credit. Okay, here are the two options. The first one is currency swap with China. And the second option is, is start using CIPS, cross-border interbank payment system for cross-border transactions. Let's start with currency swap with China. Russia's central bank and sovereign wealth fund probably own a combined $140 billion worth of Chinese bonds. The Bank of Russia could hold $80 billion of yuan debt, while the Russian National Wealth Fund is estimated to own yuan equivalent to $60 billion. Combined yuan assets of Russia represents almost a quarter of foreign ownership in China's domestic bond market. This is a significant amount of assets which Russia might want to utilize if needed. China is Russia's second biggest trade partner for both exports and imports. China and Russia have signed bilateral currency swap agreements multiple times worth $24 billion. Two countries are working on the settlement system in their home currencies to speed up the de-dollarization and internationalization of the ruble and yuan. In 2020, 17.5% of the trade between the two countries was settled by yuan, an improvement from the 3.1% in 2014. Financial messaging, clearing and settlement services in yuan between two countries without using SWIFT are executed through Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, which has an office in Moscow, and one of the Russian banks, which is a direct participant of CIPS, China's alternative to SWIFT and CHIPS. The People's Bank of China branch in Qingdao facilitates a ruble loan using the swap, with the Bank of China lending a local firm rubles so it could import Russian goods. The second option, Russia's best option to avoid SWIFT, CHIPS, CHAPS and others is to start using CIPS for cross-border transactions and avoid sanctions. Here is a quick information about CIPS. CIPS serves financial institutions in the cross-border yuan and offshore yuan businesses. CIPS now has 75 direct participants, which offers its own direct communication line between financial organizations. Direct participants can settle cross-border payments without using SWIFT or CHIPS clearinghouse payment settlement system. CIPS can serve as a messaging system without the risk of exposing transaction information to the United States. This is the key. CIPS provides messaging, clearing and settlement services for cross-border transactions for those 75 direct participants. For other thousands of indirect participants, cross-border transactions CIPS use SWIFT for messaging. CIPS processed 
around 40 trillion yuan, 12.68 trillion US dollars in 2021, a 75% increase from a year ago. 1,280 financial institutions in 103 countries and regions have connected to the system. They include 30 banks in Japan, 23 banks in Russia and 31 banks from African nations receiving yuan funds via infrastructure project under Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative. CIPS counts several foreign banks as shareholders, including HSBS, Standard Chartered, the Bank of East Asia, DBS Bank, Citibank, Australia and New Zealand Banking Group and BNP Paribas of France according to data on KeyCharger, an information provider that uses official company registration sources. This is all from me today. In my next video, we can talk about central bank digital currencies, for example, China's central bank digital currency, e yuan, and use of stable coins for cross-border transactions. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing to get notified when I upload the videos. Till next time, bye for now.